Hi, this is Jim Gardner and welcome to Art Painting 101. Today's subject is mixing and the color is greens. These seem to be a problem for a lot of beginners, but a lot of our world is green and learning how to mix greens is probably an important step in your learning process. And everyone knows that yellow and blue are the two colors that make green, but there are a lot of other ways to arrive at a green. So first, let's take a look at a few of my paintings that are all green or green based. The next thing I'd like to say is that we've had some comments back on the first video and if you haven't seen it, you might want to watch it before this. It does describe the method that we use to uh, work on this uh, a little bit more than I'm going to go into here. Uh, one of the comments was that this only works with golden paints and that's true because every manufacturer's colors are slightly different. However, the principles are still the same. Red and blue and yellows are going to make the colors that we're looking for. And learning this system just to learn how to see the color shift from one color to another is an important process and can easily be translated into any other sets or colors of paints. Anyway, let's get started. First, we're just going to mix some greens. And then later on, we're going to take a photograph, look at, look at some of the green colors that are in it. And finally, we're going to look at a painting done by the photographer. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this and learn something new. Thanks. So once again, we're at goldenpaints.com backslash mixer. I've opened up side-by-side -side windows. And if you're not familiar with this, this is the uh, palette view here. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose a color. In this case, cat yellow medium. We're going to put it in a tube. And now we're ready to begin mixing since I have already added other colors. I have here phalo blue green shade which is a, a good blue for making greens and uh, it's a very opaque color so I've only put one in and if we add five parts yellow to it you'll see we get a very saturated green and this is uh, basically like I call it a Crayola green because if you send a child to over to a box of crayons and ask for a green they would likely return with a color very similar to this the uh, each blue will change the color that we're, of green that we're going to get. And let's, let's do that now. We'll go uh, and add ultramarine blue, which is less opaque, so we're going to need to add more of it. And you can see we get a duller green. It's uh, quite distinctly different than the, than the deeply saturated green that we have here. And even if we increase the ultramarine blue, we're never really going to get to this color green. It's just a function of the colors. You can see we're already getting darker than the value, but not greener or more saturated, to be more correct. And once again, we take this out and we go to uh, cerulean blue. Uh, again, an even more transparent color, probably going to require even more of the color. In order to get green and once again we get a green and we get a nice mid green this is a little less saturated than this but it, it, it's getting closer in color but even again once again even if we add more blue to this mix we're still not going to get into this green and this is one of the reasons why i have phthalo blue in my palette because it makes such wonderful rich greens now one of the things that uh artists do is in, a, in order to desaturate a green and then what that means is that this color doesn't exist very much in uh, natural painting uh, it does occasionally but it's not a standard green that you would see in most of these bushes and trees uh, most of those greens are much more desaturated and so by adding red to the green we desaturate it and see now we're coming back into some of the colors that were in the uh, in the other group so this is this is Basically, you're taking the gray, the green and heading it towards gray. And a lot of times, one of my favorite go-tos is um, alizarin crimson. It has a little bit of blue in it. It makes some nice dark greens. And you can see we're getting much darker. 
or it can even go darker. And you can see this is less saturated, it's more headed towards a drab color. Another way to darken greens is to add ultramarine blue. And we're going to add a fair amount here because I really want to get down into some dark greens. Now you can see here you're, you're really in a, in a dark green range. This is more headed towards like hooker green and, and sap green. And if we were to add a small amount of purple, which you know is red and blue, um, you can see you can even bring it down closer to uh, a really dark green, almost to black, if you want. There's a certain point where you cross over and it becomes too purple. Well, now we've learned how to mix some greens. And let's take a look at a photograph by Sophie Chung, who has been kind enough to allow us to use it for this demonstration. And we're also going to look at the end at her painting of this subject. One of the one of the things that we're going to learn try to learn from this is how greens uh, are used in landscaping and how they go gray as we go further back in the distance, which is an important concept in painting. So let's get started with that. Okay, let's go to the photo image <clears throat> and see if we can match some of the colors in uh, Sophie Chung's photograph that we chose. And what I do is I click on image and come down to choose file and then open it up and as you can see this photograph is almost all greens and I'm going to click on an area and it's going to isolate that color and give us their mixture for how to get to it now I don't have those colors so I'm going to try to match it and I did that a little bit ahead here um, because I uh, want to save time here in the demonstration. So you can see that my green is a little bit lighter and uh, maybe a little bit greener. So I'm going to try to add some ultramarine blue to it. And you can see we're coming pretty close. So one of the things you want to ask yourself is, is this a mid green? Is this a dark green? Is this a light green? And those, those questions should help direct you towards the colors that you're probably going to need for mixing. Let's uh, try another area. And this time, we're uh, in this brightly lit green grass area and as you can see this is a tremendously light green color and once again I pre-mixed this and you can see that I'm pretty close uh, I probably need to be a little bit lighter in value and maybe just a hair more yellow and again we're we're very close and that's the sunlit area and you can see that it almost appears to be a yellow green, but in the in the photograph, surrounded by all the other greens, it's not anywhere near as uh, yellow as that. So here we isolated the shadow color or the, or the dark green color, and here it is. And again, I pre-mixed that too. And you can see I'm not quite on it, but I'm very close. And this is, again, using a two... A dark blue, ultramarine blue, a phthalo blue, which is also very opaque, very little yellow, and some Mars black to get us down in, down in color. Um, and there, there's your shadow color or background color. And then finally here, we're going to do what is the top of the trees here. And one of the things I noticed is that this color is very similar to this color. So actually, I'm starting with this color and I'm going to just lighten it with white and see where I go and it looks like it could even be even more so and even more than that let's try 60 and even more let's go 88 
And now you can see we're, we're getting very close to, to, the, uh, to the area of what we have going on here. And certainly this color is close enough. So you can mix your own colors to match these. As a beginner, you don't really need to be a purist and a realist and say, oh, that green is just a little bit more gray, a little bit more yellow, a little. Get close and enjoy painting. That's the important part. And this should help you get into the, into the areas that these colors are in and thereby make painting a little bit more enjoyable. At least I hope so. So here is the photograph that Sophie Chung took and her watercolor, which is um, absolutely beautiful. She did a wonderful job with it, I think. And we can see that uh, a lot of the values are the same. She's taken the sunlight and moved it into this area here. She's uh, taking the, the grass and brought it into here. The bond color is green and so are the shadows are also green. She's using green for the, for the darker shadows. See, um, she's added some light to the lawn and I think that's a great idea because these photographs, because the camera is trying to read the bright sunlight here, tend to darken these colors much more than our human eye would. If we were in the park itself, we would see this scene much more as the artist rendered it. The uh, light colors in the background, uh, she cleaned up this area here so it's not quite so confusing, which is wonderful, a little bit of simplification. It's a great thing. She's represented the trees without being overly, overly working them. And you can see that these greens back here have been grayed out or lightened in value so that they exceed in the, in the painting as well even more so there's more blue and these uh, deeper deeper colors these further colors and uh she's another thing i really like is she's raised up the uh water jets here so that it really stands out as a, as a found it's a little bit uh hard to see exactly what it is there she's made wonderful reflections in the water her strokes are all horizontal in the water and which makes it read as water just a wonderful job anyway i hope you learned um something from colors in the landscape and especially the color green please uh put your comments in in the video below and i will try to answer any questions or any comment that you send thanks a lot finally i hope you enjoyed the video and please like tag share follow and uh We'll see you next time when we'll cover a different subject in this ongoing series of how to mix paint. Bye now.